And so the race begins. One of these little fellas is going to fertilize the egg. Whoever comes in first will affect the child's appearance and behavior, or if it becomes a fetus at all. But what it is that makes a good sperm for fertilization and what kinds of information can be found in a spermatozoa is something that science to date knows very little about. Oh, look. It's fantastic, isn't it? You see through the eggs. It's so beautiful. The woman in the black windbreaker is Simone Imler, an evolutionary biologist in Uppsala, Sweden. I used to be out in the field a lot and uh, enjoyed it every time and because that's why I became a biologist in the first place really. But then research questions took me back to the lab. So it's really great to be back outside and see that things are still going on as they always do. So it's really beautiful. We have two species here, right? What Simone is so excited about is that this is a kind of huge birthing center for frogs. She studies sperm and how its genetic makeup affects the next generation. At the Institute for Ecology and Genetics in Uppsala, Simone has spent the last seven years. She actually is from Switzerland, but as a child also lived for a few years in Indonesia, and there they had a fish pond. And there we kept freshwater fish and I was always very curious about them and wanted to know how they look inside so I pressed a little bit on their little bellies and looked what's coming outside <laughs> and um, I think this was definitely already a sign that I wanted to always to know a bit more about how things work and and um, it was fish then and it's fish now. So now it is Uppsala where Simone is working but the fascination of fish has persisted. And today she conducts her research on zebrafish. Our research focuses really on sexual reproduction and the processes involved in there, and particularly how gametes evolve. And we're focusing mainly on the male side of the question, so we're focusing on male gametes, and we try to understand what makes male gametes sperm really good at fertilizing eggs, what do the sperm bring into the egg during fertilization? So it's not only the genetic material, but it's also other information. And how does this affect the offspring? So how does it affect the next generation as well? These are the three main targets we have, really. A germ cell can either be an egg or a sperm and contains only 23 chromosomes. Normal cells in the body have 46 chromosomes, which is a combination of the male and female constituents. So our research tries to understand which sperm is ultimately the one that fertilizes the egg, because we know that there is a lot of variation amongst the sperm within one ejaculate. And um, there is a lot of opinions that this is, it doesn't really matter which one, which one fertilizes the egg, and we beg to differ. <laughs> Why it matters which sperm fertilizes the egg actually not only has to do with the usual genetics, but also with a sperm's so-called epigenetics. Let's say that your genes are the spices in your kitchen. Some spices are often used, others less so. One person uses more sage, while another always puts chili in their food, but all use salt. Your genes work in a similar way. There are certain genes that are frequently used, while others are rarely or never used. It is epigenetics that determine which genes will emerge the strongest. If we equate this to the spice model, it would be epigenetics that determines if you are a sage person or a chili person. And so it is that epigenetics may look different in different sperm and thus also affect the offspring. So we're now going down to the separate fish facilities where we keep all our fish. And the reason why we actually use fish as a model system is mainly because they are external fertilizers. That means we can collect the sperm and the eggs from the fish and do everything in a Petri dish which gives us a lot of advantages over having to deal with male and female interactions. And, um... 
The zebrafish here are living well. It's warm and comfortable. They are under constant watch and evaluation. Certain groups are involved in stress tests. The researchers want to know the effects when one male has to compete with another male, for example, as opposed to one that is alone with two females. Will the increased stress affect his offspring? And if so, how? Hello. Hello. What are you up to? Counting embryos hatched. Yes. Simone and her team are simply following entire life cycles. They manipulate the environment for the zebrafish, examine how the sperm is affected and the sequencing of the DNA, looking at the structure around the DNA to see which genes are active, and finally, they look at the resulting effects on the offspring. Yeah. Tomorrow I'll be done with the third generation. Really? Yeah. Super. Wow. God, this is unbelievable. The end of an yes. era. Yeah. Super almost. nice. Yeah. So these are the these were the last ones here. Yes. Yeah. Yes. These are almost yeah. second batch to the last. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Super amazing. Yeah. <laughs> really nice. When one can see that the sperm have different epigenetics and understand why they look just so and what the consequences will be. This ability will affect and make a difference in several areas of research. One of the most obvious and profound effects this can have is on in vitro fertilization. Here, embryologists often select a specific sperm to fertilize an egg. After the sperm show their swimming capabilities, one is selected that looks viable and inserted into the egg. But as a result of Simone's research, we will be able to read a variety of additional information about the sperm that indicate its ability to complete successful fertilization of the egg. It will then be easier to choose the right one. So in the germline, we also try to understand how certain mutations occur more often than others. And these are then inherited into the next generation. And these may cause disease in the next generation. And if you understand what creates those mutations, we probably can counter it by, for example, doing knockouts um, just to make sure that these diseases are no longer inherited into the next generation. So when do you see the As far as the ethicality of this work is concerned, Simone leaves that for others to determine. But her research has shown that our germ cells carry much more information than we previously had knowledge of. <laughs>